Hey guys, as the drama continues on Magic the Gathering YouTube, episode 2, we I wanted to take some time and talk about uh, where my channel is in terms of the MTG Finance community and address it more directly. So obviously you probably watching the video know that I don't write articles. I don't engage in Twitter conversations about MTG Finance and I rarely use the hashtag MTG Finance anymore. And I don't even consider myself part of the MTG Finance community. So what I do is I will look at some a card that has already gone up in price. Then I will say, oh, look at this uh, Dwarven Recruiters. Isn't that interesting? Why did they go up in price? And here we have an obvious answer which is there's more of that creature type in Kaladas than previous. Therefore, it can search for more cards. And something like, that's a very obvious example, but something like Snapcaster Mage, the logic is exactly the same. There's only going to be more instants, there's only going to be more sorceries, and it's better the instants get. So let's say, just like taking a crazy example, we have a lightning bolt that can deal four damage instead of three damage. That makes Snapcaster Mage not just a tiny bit better, a ton better. Uh, so there are some cards that get better in time, and there are some cards that don't. And the attributes are very, very similar to the, the recruiters, as well as, you know, a Snapcaster Mage might be a little less obvious, but still very basic. So for the most part, what we do in this channel, what a lot of you want us to do in this channel, is to do uh, MTG Finance for me to tell you I like this card and this is why I like it and we should all go out and buy it. I will move towards there. I have gotten, you know, as I went to make this video, I went to look at my old speculations, voice a resurgence at 1250, it later hit over $50, almost $60, uh, Archangel of Foon, that card was very good as well, and then Elspeth. And I made a separate video about Elspeth and I realized that was a lot of fun. Doing that was a lot of fun. You're not going to hit on every single card, but the cards that you do hit on, it's kind of interesting because Voice, there was a card called Pillar of Flame at the time, and it just nullified Voice. But I said, what if they don't have Pillar of Flame? Then this card will dominate. And then Pillar of Flame was rotated out, and then the Voice had a period where it was the most dominating card. And then you had the Archangel, and Archangel had a lot of different combos in modern that you could throw it into. And one of those spike weavers, they can gain infinite life, and then because they gain infinite life, it got infinite power, and then then you smashed it, and it was really fun. So, and Elspeth was just amazing. Six mana for a Planeswalker was a lot at the time, and that was not something that a lot of people felt like could work. Uh, and you can read their old articles claiming that Elspeth at $15 was too much, but she rose to 40 plus. And she was one of the most dominating cards in that format. I like doing that, and I will do a little bit more of it. I'm not gonna make a separate video for this one. There is that Mythic Vehicle. I forget what it does, but it does like a lightning bolt effect if you crew it and you attack with it. It's a Mythic Vehicle, it's at $5 as of this recording. I love that vehicle, and that would be my pre-order speculation. So there you go. Uh, but in the future, I will try to be a little more direct and I won't do as much. I'll still do, hey, look at the recruiters. They went up in price. Cool. Or, hey, look at you know, Norway. <laughs> they went up in price. But I will also make more direct um, recommendations as to what to put, um, what to buy playset of, what to buy two. I would always recommend buying two playsets. That way, if it does go up in price, you have your own, which is great, and then you have another to trade away into something that you can trade up. Uh, what happens when, is when a card goes up in price, the demand increases and people normally need a play set of them. And if they need a play set of them, it is something that is really easy to trade up because now you're trading four cards for one, which is the definition of trading up. So yeah, I will probably move towards that direction it's not that I dislike the MTG Finance community, it's not that I, it's just that I cannot right now be part of it. I can ne never ever be part of that community again. And that was something I realized very um, early on as soon as John Medina, who was 
a really good friend, a really good person. He, we used to talk all the time about how to improve my videos, which I never listened to anything he said, but I appreciate the effort and he promoted me heavily across. He was the number one MTG financer at the time, by far, by a huge margin. And it was, I think his most famous article was he traded magic cards for an iPad when iPads used to be like more valuable. So once he left, I just didn't have any reason to stay with the community at all or engage with them because I was like, hey, you know, he's not engaging with them. I'm not engaging with them. I'm going to stop. And that's what I did. I did not but I want to create better content for you and that sometimes is telling you what to go out and get. And I will have another video this week um, and I'm going to spoil it right now because I think that's nice. Um, I love pain lands. I love origin play pain lands. That's something that I'm looking at and I want it to hit the lowest price possible, but I would definitely jump into them. Anyway, bye guys.